draw verbs, not nouns. I read that and I felt like, wow, that sounds cool. But it's like hearing advice from Mr. Miyagi. I really want to do it, but I'm not entirely sure what it means. This tutorial is based on some of the ideas in the book Drawn to Life by Walt Stanchfield. So Walt Stanchfield taught artists at Disney, especially about gesture. I really love the types of figure drawings and gestural drawings that animators do, but even if you don't, they really took a lot of principles about gesture to an extreme, which means there's a ton that we can learn from them, and there's a ton that we can learn from Walt Stanchfield. So let's get into it. My name's Kenzo, this is Love Life Drawing, and this video is part of Figuary. And Figuary is a 28-day life drawing challenge where you can practice your life drawing skills every day with beautiful life model reference videos from the Crocky Cafe. And the idea is you can apply the ideas that you learn in this series of lessons by us, Love Life Drawing. So when you're doing life drawing, you start by trying to draw what you're seeing, which is hard enough as it is. But then as you progress, you start learning to simplify more. But ultimately, what we're drawing is still based on the physical forms in front of us. The idea with draw the verb is to refocus on what the person is doing, or at least what is happening in the pose. So with this idea of the gesture, it's all about the action. So I really like the figure drawings of Norman LeMay. Norman LeMay from Grizz and Norm. They're a husband and wife team who both create beautiful artwork and they've put out a lot of useful tips over the years. So I really recommend checking them out on Instagram, checking their website, um, and I really love all of their artwork. When I was studying these figure drawings by Norman LeMay, I really felt how every line was put to work in service of the larger action and movement of the pose. So here you can see that the pose is all about the powerful twisting motion and everything is geared towards that action. So I think that's what Walt Stanchfield means by draw the verb. Thinking about accurately drawing all the parts of the figure's structure would be drawing the nouns, whereas drawing the verb means prioritizing the overall action. So the first exercise I tried to do was just draw some figuary poses with this draw the verb idea in mind. I also asked uh, Jared Cullum, who's one of my favorite artists who creates really wonderful comic books among other things, to do these exercises with me because he's a lot more experienced with these ideas than me. For me, it was a struggle. I found myself unable to detach from the figure that I was seeing. I just slipped back into my normal drawing approach. My eyes just immediately start breaking down the reference, maybe exaggerate the pose a little bit, but ultimately finding just the big visual flows and simplifying the forms. I've worked really hard to connect my eyes and hands while I'm drawing in that way. And it can be hard to get away from your usual habits when you're drawing. So to learn more quickly, I think it's really good to force yourself out of your comfort zone, to really make you not draw how you normally wanna draw. And that's what I needed to do to start learning this lesson. So Jared and I decided we would draw these poses as completely different characters. Jared decided to draw a rhino character doing these same poses. A rhino would have a completely different shape and different structure to the model. So that would really push him to detach from just drawing what he's seeing and focus on the action that she's doing, focus on what's happening in the pose. He has a good amount of experience with this more kind of cartoony style of drawing and he showed me how a lot of what we've been working on actually still applies. So he's still looking for those big counterbalanced curves of the pose, the squash and the stretch, these big things that are happening in the pose and then applying them to the forms and the shapes of the hippo. I decided to do something a bit easier. I used a fox character that I've drawn before this fox is a bit more humanoid, so it's a little bit easier. I didn't need to completely change the structure, but it was different enough that I couldn't just draw what I was seeing. My biggest struggle, other than just generally feeling out of my element and really uncomfortable, which is just how learning often feels, I couldn't quite figure out what the verb was that I was drawing 
in some of these poses. I thought the pose needed to have a really clear action, a really clear narrative like kicking or lifting. And I was really overthinking it like, okay, so maybe this one, she's doing a performance and she's kind of having fun and being silly and I'm drawing her doing that performance. Uh, and I even at one point emailed Larry at Crocky Cafe in desperation and I said, can you send some more clear cut poses with like obvious actions like shooting or jumping or something so that I can do this exercise more easily. But then Jared explained to me, it doesn't have to be that sort of obvious in your face action with a narrative to it. It doesn't have to be what the person is doing so much as what's happening in the pose. So you can look for more basic ideas like leaning, opening, reaching, squashing, pulling, pushing, squashing and stretching, balancing. And you can see these various things happening in the pose. We already look for a lot of these ideas, things like the squash side and the stretch side. It's just that now we wanna see how they all relate to each other on a bigger theme. And this is the big idea that was very kind of new for me to think about is how everything is related. Everything is oriented on the same theme. So as the figure reaches up, there's a stretch here and there's a squash on the other side. This shoulder might be pulled forward, the other one pulled back, the head might be pulled back on the same larger movement, but it all contributes to the overall action. And that's why Jared had no problem with this exercise and with these poses and could apply the same action to his hippo character. He found the big stretch, he found the squash, he found the stretching and the pulling back and the pushing forward and just applied those ideas to the forms of the hippo. So every part of the pose is related. Here's an example from the book. If the body leans forward to grasp some object with its outstretched hand, there must be stretch and there must be an adjustment in weight distribution such as counterbalancing with the opposite arm and placing one foot closer to the object than the other to keep the body balanced. The push and the pull, the squash and the stretch, they're all, the twisting, it's all oriented to the same action. You still want your figures to make sense. You don't throw out all your knowledge of the structure. It's just that you only really need the absolute basics of it. So as Walt Stanchfield says, an elbow is an elbow, even in a caricature drawing. It can't bend the other way. For our figures, the ideas that we've already looked for in the figure, the three big sections of the torso, rib cage, midsection, and pelvis, how the leg tapers down as you go down it, uh, the characteristic curves of the leg that we've been looking for, those still need to be there in the drawing so that the figure feels like a figure. Another thing is depth cues, like giving the drawing depth. It still needs to feel dimensional and you can use a lot of the same methods that we've already been looking at. Big ideas like just overlapping shapes. This shape is behind that shape or the surface line, the cross contour lines the way things get smaller as they recede in space. These are things that you're still gonna wanna bring out even as you're prioritizing drawing the action because they're so important and fundamental to any drawing. And one last thing that is really useful to look for that I noticed a lot as I was studying uh, the Normand LeMay drawings, you'll often find a straight edge opposite a more curved edge. So often the side where the muscles are contracting they're gonna create bumps and curves, but then the other side is gonna be more stretched out and often that can be represented with a straight line. So finally, I tried to tackle this pose using all of these ideas, trying to strip everything back until everything was in service of the overall action that I was going for. I focused on her twisting while keeping really strong balance. You know, she looks very balanced and poised, but she's also twisting. I tried to use straights against curves. I really tried to make every line work in service of the overall gentle twist and just remove all the details that didn't help explain that. I pushed her head around a little bit more. I pushed her shoulders and hips to help with the twist. So did I achieve this draw the verb idea? 
I don't think so, not fully, not really. But I did really like the drawing that I did anyway. It felt more dynamic, it felt more loose, and it was fun to do, and I certainly learned something from it. So this has been one of those videos which has taken a while because I keep getting confused about it. I keep overthinking it and like rewriting it and stuff like that. And usually when that's the case, the solution is not more study and more thinking, it's more drawing. And that's what I'm gonna have to do. I can't just figure this out and nail it in a few practice sessions. I'm gonna need to dedicate a full month in my 2021 planner to practice along these lines. And then I might start to really make sense of these ideas and start to see it coming through properly in the drawings that I'm doing. And that's something that I'm gonna do and it's something I'm excited to do. So once again, this is another one where you don't have to be able to just do this now that you've seen this lesson, you should be able to go out and just do it. It's gonna take a lot of practice, but I hope that you enjoyed the ideas in this video. Next week, we're gonna go back to more basic fundamental ideas, bringing things together and putting them into our drawings. So I hope you join me. I hope you're enjoying Figuary so far. It's time for you to go get your Crocky Cafe poses and do the most important part of Figuary, which is the drawings. So I'll see you in the next video.